Hello, and welcome to my mod list showcase, where I give an overview and opinion on mod lists to help find the right one for you. This time, we are looking at Horizon Roleplay Edition, released for Fallout 4 and created by Orgspeed. The version I have been playing on is version 2.0, released on the 17th of December 2022. You can check on the mod list Discord linked below for any changes and updates. Also, this list used to be called Fallout 4 Enhanced Edition, which I did make a video for over a year ago, but so much has changed that it can pretty much be treated as a new list. Firstly, what is Horizon Roleplay Edition? The description reads, A hardcore list made to both expand and deepen the Commonwealth, built around the Horizon gameplay overhaul. Every encounter is deadly, and ammo is scarce. Also, with this 2.0 version, there's improved graphics and performance, on top of new gameplay changes. Horizon Roleplay Edition is available to download from the Wavajack Modlist installer. While I won't cover the specifics of the installation in this video, clear and easy to follow instructions are provided on a README page. You can also follow along with my Wabajack Exploration Guide video on my channel and linked below. With over 200 mods, this list totals to around 100GB to download, and once installed, it requires a couple of in-game tweaks to get working, but it doesn't take long at all. A huge part of the improved graphics comes from NACX, a huge weather and lighting mod which provides a variety of options for Fallout's look. Each weather looks so impressive and can really transform the landscape at all times of the day. Likely one of the first things you noticed was the new trees, with the mod Boston Natural Surroundings adding in new vegetation across the landscape. It offers a nice middle ground, where it breaks away from the dead look of vanilla, but isn't as overgrown as some other landscape mods. Textures are provided by numerous mod authors and compiled together by user Byrate Beck. They aim on keeping to vanilla's look, while making them more detailed with zero cost of performance. On top of this, the Fifty Shades of Rust mod emphasises the decaying feeling of the landscape, which I personally enjoy, seeing as it's meant to be 200 years after the apocalypse. As for lighting, Flanzen's light tweaks, as well as interiors enhanced, adjust the lighting to feel more natural with less intrusive fog everywhere. And the Fallout 4 Enhanced Colour Correction mod tweaks the overall colour and contrast to look better with no performance impact. For the EMB, this list uses Decent DMB, which is subtle yet adds a ton of depth to the world, focusing on the darker wasteland side of things. Finally there's performance, and I have to say I'm very impressed. I remember playing the old version of this list over a year ago, and the low performance was a real bummer when trying to enjoy it, but coming back to this new version, it's a night and day difference. With these specs I was able to hold around 60 to 80 FPS in the vast majority of areas, and if you're thinking, well obviously you'd get high FPS with an RTX 3080. Just remember, Fallout 4 usually runs terribly on all systems, unless optimised properly, which this list does. The author has spent a long old time building these things called pre-combines, and it will take too long to explain, but just know it's something that takes a lot of effort to get the whole thing running smoother. And there's also help with the mod Shadow Boost, which dynamically adjusts your shadow settings while in-game in order to maintain a steady FPS. So yeah, looks and runs great. This entire list is based around the Horizon mod, which is easily one of the biggest mods to release for Fallout 4. I could make a whole video talking about Horizon on its own, and in fact there's numerous YouTube series dedicated just to this mod, so understand that what I talk about is a very brief summary. But basically, this mod changes every aspect of the game to be focused around survival and immersion. For example, health management is far more important, as you need to use medical items after being injured. Loot rarity is more appropriate depending on where you are in the world. Power armour is harder to find. Ammo and useful items are more expensive. A new skill system is implemented, akin to previous Fallout games, so perks will now give you plus 40 to lockpicking and so on and performing activities in the wasteland can even improve these skills. Settlements offer new crafting options for ammo, food, trading and so on, and entire buildings can be placed down. 
more items can be scrapped, and cargo bots can deliver junk to your settlements. I could go on and on, and I haven't even talked about the combat changes yet. At the very least, I'd recommend going on the Horizon mod page and looking at this section here. It gives a brief one-line summary of the changes, or maybe watch one of the many videos talking about the mod. And that's not all, as a bunch of other gameplay changes have been included on top of Horizon. For example, the campsite mod allows for craftable camps to be placed anywhere in the wasteland. Classic Radiation Poison 2 brings back the classic radiation system, with radiation providing debuffs to your character, rather than decreased health. And finally, the Vaths Redux mod replaces the VAT system with bullet time. So after pressing Q, time will slow down for a brief moment while it uses your stamina. So yeah, there's a huge amount of changes with this list. It's honestly very overwhelming at the start, and I imagine that's only emphasised if you're newer to the game. But it's so in-depth that once you get the hang of the core mechanics, it really becomes one of the best and most detailed survival games available. To start off the combat changes, Horizon once again offers a plethora of new mechanics. First there's enemy scaling, where the mod adjusts the resistances and damage of NPCs dynamically based on your level. Put simply, NPCs won't become too easy to kill as you level up, but also, you'll find less enemies with an unreasonable amount of health at low levels. Enemies also have new vulnerabilities, where specific areas on their body will take increased damage when shot, but those with armour will take less damage. And topping things off, there's also more enemy loot and variety, so you're unlikely to fight a group of enemies that all feel the same. Moving on, there's the Immersive Fallout mod, which alters the movement speed of you and your enemies depending on size and what you're equipped with. And it also changes weapon recoil, where you now have to manually adjust the recoil as you fire, rather than letting the game recover the gun for you. Finally, there's the Realistic Bullet mod, which makes bullets have an actual travel time to be affected by gravity, so you have to adjust your aim depending on your height and distance from the target. All these changes, plus the new injury and healing systems, make combat incredibly deadly, but just really satisfying. If you run into a group of enemies, you'll likely die, but if you take your time to scout the place out, get to an advantageous position, and use the right weapon, you can clear out a group of enemies before they even know what hit them. Quite a few new quests and locations have been added, all of which balanced with the rest of the list in mind. Mods like Fourville, Hilda Hughes, and Fault 494 have been included, all of which adding new stories in dungeons, offering hours of playtime. And the widely loved Tales of the Commonwealth is also included, which adds a ton of new NPCs and quests across the wasteland, and all naturally fitting as if they were always there. As for changes to the wasteland itself, Good Neighbour Expanded makes Good Neighbour look like a place people could actually live. Then the mods stumble upon interiors, inside jobs and beantown interiors, all work in tandem to open up many of the buildings into actual explorable areas, rather than being houses with boarded up doors. All the new items have been carefully selected to work with Horizon, with some even coming from Horizon itself. The mod adds new medications, new scrap items, and a ton of new settlement items for crafting and general survival. As for new weapons included with this list, there's a bunch of high quality weapon mods, adding crossbows, SMGs, pistols, rifles, laser weapons, melee weapons, and more. All of which fitting into the survival theme, and working with Fallout's lore. And the same goes for armours, with clothing of the Commonwealth, and Ellie's armour compendium including a vast amount of new and diverse clothing options, found on NPCs. Seven new power armours can be discovered on your adventures, again all being high quality and fitting into the wasteland. Finally, new settlement items have been included, with a focus of new building materials, and items to make your place nice and cosy. Numerous audio adjustments have been made, with the key mods being lost audio tweaks and reverb and ambience overhaul, creating more realistic sounds that echo over the wasteland. And there's more specific audio mods, 
like Terrifier, which changes the sound of ghouls, and the Commonwealth Gunfire Overhaul, which adds new and improved sounds for every vanilla firearm. Also, loads of new ambient tracks have been added, with the mods Musical Law and Faded Glory, which you can listen to on their mod pages to see if you like them. Have a listen to the audio for yourself. For some other notable changes with this list, the Silent Protagonist mod is included, with an option to toggle off the player character's voice, as it always should have been. Looking at you, Todd. Take notes. Immersive HUD removes the HUD from the screen when you don't need it, and it pairs nicely with new UI icons offered by Horizon. The Everyone's Best Friend mod means you can have dog meat and one other companion with you at all times. And finally, Mid's alternative ending cinematics include new endings for when you beat the main questline. They're closer to New Vegas' ending slideshow, where it goes through the different consequences of your actions. Now for some additions to the list, but first I must stress, any changes you make to the list has nothing to do with the mod list author. You should only do so if you have an understanding of modding, and accept that any consequences are yours to deal with. So firstly, the install guide mentions adding Pack Attack NPC and its companion mod. Basically, these are mods which overhaul the NPC AI to be far smarter in gunfights. Now, the reason it's not in this list is because you have to manually download it from the mod author's discord. But, if you know how to add mods, I'd recommend it, as they really make combat all the more satisfying. Now, at this point, I'd usually recommend mods to add on top, but honestly, I just don't recommend it unless you're really used to modding, and digging into files to make things compatible. Because Horizon is such a huge mod covering every aspect of the game, there's a lot that it's not compatible with. I notice this list has over 30 patches dedicated to making mods work with Horizon, so yeah, it's not recommended. I've always thought the world of Fallout could make an excellent survival game, and this proves exactly that. You're faced with this huge post-apocalyptic wasteland, where people are struggling to survive, so it only makes sense that things are just as difficult for you. The key word I keep using is satisfying, because every victory with this list, be it killing raiders, stealing an item without being noticed, or crafting some powerful armour, all feels earned through the slow and careful progression system. The big hurdle is how overwhelming it can all be at first. The changes brought from Horizon alone take a while to get used to, so with hundreds of mods on top of that, there's plenty of new stuff that you need to learn. But honestly, after skim reading the Horizon mod page and playing around with a character for a bit, I got a good grasp on things pretty quickly. So if you're wanting to play Fallout, but looking for a challenge, Horizon Roleplay Edition offers exactly that. It's a difficult but balanced experience, with good performance, new weapons, new quests, and a ton more. Undoubtedly worth a go for any survival mode enthusiast. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a like as it helps the channel grow. I also have a Twitch where I'm going to stream one day, any day now. And a Discord if you want to talk about mod stuff or anything else. Other than that, big thank you to my Patreon supporters. Rook, Alec Bentley, Emperor Wolf. Jack Ma, and Christian Hell. It's a wee bit chilly in Britain at the moment, so your contributions are helping keep everything working, so thank you so much. And I also have a coffee account if you want to give a little one-time donation. Thank you and farewell.